So now what I've just done is I've created, and it's just slow here, um, I've created, uh, think of a filing cabinet, right? And, and what I need to do is put titles on the, f on the folders that I'm, s so I'm, I'm just trying to use a physical metaphor, right? And if I want to make a, uh, your material has been added to a bookmark collection, okay? So I, I had to put all the labels on it that, 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 that's right for me. Now, what I should be able to do now, it takes, a, sometimes it might, it might take a little while to index this. Oh, here it is. So here is the bookmark collection I just created. Right? And now it's part of, uh, oh, someone just, did someone just copy this one? My ESL. Oh, so, someone else. Oh, someone else just did this. Oh, 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 oh. oh okay, all right. Oh, wh wh why beat me to it, right? Oh, you need, need my voice in there. Oh, okay, for the video. Okay. Now, one of the things you can see here is. If you go, when you become a member, if you click on your name here, let's just so, up here, you click on your name, you get my profile. And here are all the things over the years that I've contributed. So if I click on bookmark collections, here is the bookmark collection that, that, that I just created, all right? Now, let's, um, let's say, oh, I just added one thing. Now, what if I want to add a few more things into it? So let me, let me just hit the back button. Go back a few, all right? And now I say, uh, I'd like the ESL blues. Excellent collection of, all right, and I can go here. So now I've gone to a new material. And I would say, oh, I want to add this to my bookmark collection. Now, see now here, see how it automatically came up the title? And, and now I can say uh, another good grammar uh, practice website for my students, right? And I submit it. So your material has been added, all right? So I go, thank you. Now, let's just check it. I can go, again, go back to my profile. Because this saves all the things I've done. I can look at my bookmark collection. And it has to, it, and what will happen? It, it takes a little while to re-index it, but what will show up will be uh, a second thing. Oh, there it is, okay? So you see how I have two things now? All right. Right, so as I, um, as I find things in Merlot, I can just add them to this ESL, EFL, collection of mine, right? And it helps me keep track of that. And I can, and you can do on ESL, if you want to do another one on, 
Um, and, or you could do one just ESL just on grammar. Then another one could be ESL for conversation. So you can create any type of collections you want for yourself because they're just they're for you. Right? You can also create these for, for your students. This collection right here, if you give them this URL right at the top there, you can say, here's your homework assignment. Here are materials for you to go study. Right? And you can just give them that URL. It'll go to your bookmark collection. And then what they can do if they become below people, they can say, thank you very much. I want to copy this set of resources into my own profile. So just as you kind of created a collection of ESL materials, then your students can make it their collection, and then they can add on to it and practice, and they can comment about it. They can change their own descriptions and annotations. So it becomes there. So, you know, you, you know uh, have any of you ever used someone else's playlist for your, uh, for, you know, iTunes? Remember the old, you know, and you share playlists? This is the same principle of sharing learning resources. You collect some, and then if any of you wanted to go into Merlot right now, you go into this bookmark collection, you can then just simply click on copy this, make a copy of this for your bookmark collection, then, then it becomes yours. And you can give it to your students, they can give it to one another, they can build their own. I see a little fuzziness in your looking at No, I just wonder that if you want to assign your student to read, maybe you assign the student to a three, two or three branches. But you, when you do this, your student can go both, right? If you assign it to read. You can assign, but maybe you, we have to remark that right? read is 10 to 15, right? Oh, okay. you get the whole book, right? Oh, okay, so, so this one, so there are all types of materials in the low. Some are books, right? Yeah. And let's just go to this one. Okay. All right, and um, so this one is just a website to help practicing coordinating conjunctions, all right? And, but, or, yet, right? This is just giving them information. And so, so uh, again, a website that can help them practice, give them examples. So you can tell them, here's the website, look at conjunctions, and it's free for them to use. So rather than having a book they buy, they, they now have a website for them to practice as much as they want. Okay? Yeah. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Was this helpful? A little bit? It's okay to say no. All right. I wonder if, let's say, if I want to uh, compile websites about writing under just one name, you know, one category. Uh -huh. Yeah. As I see, you have to name every new um, material. Uh, First, wait. there's this choice create a new category, but not to add on the old. Oh. oh, yeah, no, no. So, so in this one right here, let me just go back, hang on. Um, let me just, uh, here, go quick to. Hang on. Okay. Okay. 
So under this one category, ESL, EFL for my students, you can just keep on adding material after material after material. You can just keep, you just click on bookmark collection. And if you don't want to write anything there, like if you don't want to write a comment, you just leave it blank. So you can just add as many materials as you want under that one category. Here, yeah, I'll, let me show you again here. Here's an, I'm just going to pick another one. I'll, I'll, I'll show you how you can just add it on easily. You say English Learning Listening Lab. I can just click on bookmark this material. It's in the ESL. I don't have to write anything if I don't want to. I just click on submit. So two buttons. elements of what you described. So I'm going to first talk from the policy side or legal side and then I'll talk from the kind of the practice side about how to actually do it. Uh, the materials, all the materials in Merlot have what's called an acceptable usage policy. Okay, and it, which, which means that if you're using it for educational, non-commercial purposes, mm -hmm you can use everything in Merlot, right? And if you want to just use a website or if you want to print out the website and put it in a course pack, educational, non-commercial purposes, you're good to go. That's the, you know, the acceptable use policy. Now, it's even better if the author of the materials put the Creative Commons license on it because that's so that makes it very very clear what you can do with it, okay? But with Merlot, um, it's um, you, we have an acceptable use policy. Now, in part, what we're using is um, again this is in U.S. law something called fair use, um, and legally you can use other people's copyrighted materials if. You're using it for educational purposes and you're not going to detract from the person making money off of the materials, right? Now, if someone puts a website up for free, are you going to detract from them making money? No, right? So, so you, you can use as much as you want of websites that are free, often fair use if you have a publisher material like a book they say you can only use a small amount under fair use because if you start copying the whole book then you're reducing the publisher's ability to make money but if it's free on the web there's no money that you're going to prevent someone from making because they're not making money at it already right so so now that, that that's the legal aspect of it 
Now, the practical aspect of it is, let's say you saw that um, the conjunction website for ESL, right? And it's just a website, and so if you want to create a, you know, a print copy, you print it out on your printer, and then you can bring it to your campus bookstore or something and have them make multiple copies of it, that's okay. Right? And, and I think w the way, the way in a sense to protect yourself or to make it clear is you can put like a cover page on this where you say, this is the website, this was obtained from Merlot with the yeah. educational policy, the usage policy of educational non-commercial purposes um, and, uh, and, and, um, uh, and the cost is, uh, of this printed material is what it costs the bookstore to print. And it's whatever, you know, five cents a page or whatever it might be, okay? So, so w w what you want to always do is often making it clear whenever you reuse someone's materials, if you say this is for educational, non-commercial purposes, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a good protection on the policy side, okay? Was that helpful? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here, um, see, I mean, you're a writer, so there's some stuff you give away, yeah. and there's some stuff, away. yeah, yeah, and there's some stuff you sell. Now, when you want to give it away, the value of giving it away is you want to um, get more recognition for your work. Well, how do you do that? You have to market. And if you can think about Merlot is a marketing tool, right? Because how would someone find your website? Oh, it's really hard. But if, if you have a tool that you catalog your material mm -hmm. and someone say, I'm looking for Thai poetry. I'm making something up. Let's say you're a poet, right? I'm, I'm, I'm making it up, right? Um, and, uh, and if you catalog it in the library, mm -hmm. then people are more likely to find it. If it's just buried someplace in a Google search, you'll never find it. Yes, Tammy. For her case, uh, about the student, she afraid of uh, like cutting case for the assignment, right? Right. Yeah. 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 Real quick. Um, hang on. Uh, do I want? Okay. All right. Um, this right here. A, a little um, explanation about Creative Commons. Is that okay? Since we're talking about this. These are the various um, types of licenses that you can give open education resources. Okay. Um, so everything is CC Creative Commons. And the first one is, it says buy, right? And what that means is when you use other people's material, you have to attribute it to the original author. And so that's what the buy is. So you say, um, I'm using this material that was created by the person, okay? And we do that in academia all the time. We reference other people's material. Now, what this says, though, too, is I can only use some of it. I can use all of it. 
I can actually change it around. I can paraphrase it. All I have to do is reference that I use some portion of this in my creative work. Okay? CC BY gives you lots of flexibility. Um, you can, um, what you can do, I mean, you might think of this as plagiarism, but with something with a CC BY, you can take all that material, and let's say you got it from the California State University, right? You can take off our name and stick the name of your university on it, and then say, at the bottom, a reference, I got this from California State University, but you then have the permission to use it because that's what the CC BY says. All I need to say is I am attributing it. I got it from you. But you can do whatever you want with it. Okay. And, and maybe what I'll do is I'll show you some st stuff about how, how, how it works. The next one, CC BY, and it says SA, and it's like this recycling. Okay. SA means share alike. Okay. Now, I created something, you take it, and you create something new with it, right? Now, the question is, you just created what's called a derivative work. Now, the question is, what license are you going to put on it? If if it has a CC BY license, you can put any license you want. You can even sell it. You can charge people for it. If it's just CC BY, it lets you do whatever you want. But SA, share alike, says if you use my stuff, you have to share alike. You have to use the same license that I used. Right? So it could be buy and share alike. So if you take my stuff, you will need to have a CC BY SA license on it. And that's a way to help propagate the sharing of open education resources. If it's just CC BY, if people want to try to make money on it, they can do it. CC BY keeps it, in a sense, in the open side. The next one down, NC, non-commercial. So that means attributed to me, and you can do anything else you want with it, but you just can't sell it. The next one, again, another combination non-commercial and you have to share alike. It's again a little bit more restrictive. Okay. Now the the f one two the next one down, CC by N D. Okay. Uh, N D. Okay. No derivative. Meaning what you can do is you can take my stuff and you can use it exactly as it is. On the other things, you can change it, right? And so, you know, and in teaching and learning, a lot of it is, you know, if I have an assigned, you know, some activity or, or I'm writing something in the US, you're gonna wanna change it for the Thai situation, right? Could be changing the language changing examples, whatever it might be. But if it's an ND, it says you can use it, but you have to use it exactly as I said. The derivative. Non, so ND is non-derivative. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, hang on. So non-derivative. OK. 
Okay? And the last one is you can't make money and you have to use it as exactly as I give it to you. Okay? So these are the different um, ways to license materials. And, and this is important for you if you're creating materials. And, you know, like the, when you're creating MOOCs, many of the MOOCs, all the edX and the Coursera courses, they don't have Creative Commons license on it. They're all copyrighted. You cannot take that material and use it outside of those courses. So they're really not open education resources. They're really just open enrollment courses. Anyone can take the course, but they can't take the material. Okay. And now the question, you know, to Stephen Downs, who talked this morning, um, he talked about his MOOC is about using open education resources so the learners can take it and use it however they wish. And so these are some of the questions that you're going to have to look at in working with Thai MOOCs is, are you going to use materials that people can reuse however that they would want or not? Okay. So was that helpful there yeah. about the licensing? Yeah. Okay. Um, would you like to see how, what tools Merlot has for you to create? Um, your own OER, your own websites type stuff? Simple things? Okay. All right, let's go home. All right. So right here, create materials with Content Builder. Now, when you become a member, you will be able to use this tool to uh, still going um, to create websites. Now, for the instructional designers, this is a really simple templated tool. All right, um, we use this for faculty to create materials to create e-portfolios, okay? And, um, and it, it, it's a simple tool. It's not uh, anything um, uh, sophisticated. But it's very practical and, and useful. So let's say I want to create a web page. And this is something, I'm uh, just coming back to self-directed learner. Um, you can have people who want to create their own web pages, and you know, you asked about how to get people motivated. You know, this morning I talked about make my own relevant education, and if you have the students say, create something that is you, create something that reflects your learning, that's your choices, that these are the materials I want then you have a chance for them to become proud of an accomplishment, right? And then show off what they've done. And there are ways for them to basically publishing can be a very motivating process because now they're, they now are a member of the 21st century, right? They, they have something for themselves. And, um, and how can you do this doesn't cost any money, you don't have to pay licenses or anything along those lines, Merlot can provide that tool for them to use. So let me just show you how, how to do this, okay? Let me just make this bigger too so you can see. Okay. <clears throat> um, Uh, 
I'm going to show you something. I'm going to begin with something uh, we created. Um, all right. Uh, this morning I talked about. Um, you know what, before asking you to remember, let me just show you. I think I showed this one this morning. You remember this morning I was showing you um, e-portfolios of faculty writing about how they were using textbooks for free, okay? And uh, and we have a whole lot of these, right? And so um, so here's the e-portfolio about the textbook, um, blah blah blah. You know, here's why I adopted it, things like this. Okay. Now let's go back here. So how did we get, we have all these faculty, and faculty like to do their own thing, right? And if you gave them a tool, go create it, it'd be all over the place, right? I mean, you've probably seen this. So we created a template. So here's a cool for ed faculty OER adoption template. And um, well, you know what, let me just make this just a touch smaller so I can keep it all on the screen. There we go. So uh, what we have, and I'll just show you, so we've created a template that gives people a set of scaffolding questions to answer. And I think if you're looking at having your students create their own websites about their own learning or have faculty tell stories about their own, th this is a very useful method. So, so as, as you can see here, let's just begin on this side. It says, you know, put a link to the book, provide a brief description of the textbook, including the concepts, blah, blah, blah. Give me the authors, the formats, blah, blah, blah. Um, in the middle, about the course, what are the prerequisites? You can see how we're giving people questions to answer. And then on the, you know, describe the main motivation. So in a sense, the tool gives people something, and I'll show you how, how it works, but it gives them guidance about how to create something that will be valuable for other people. Because just telling someone, go build a website, you're going to get, I'll just call it, a wide variability of quality. But if you give people good design guidelines, what you need to include, you're going to get pretty good quality. And, and I'll show you a whole collection of these by over 300 faculty members, and, and you can get a sense of this, right? So, so, so this is the, the um, uh, Hujima, that, that, that's the template, and the way you do this, I, let's say I want to select that template. I select the template, and then I'm going to call this uh, uh, for TCU. And now I'm going to save it. So I now I've created a label for my website web page that I'm building. Okay, ePortfolios. Now this is an example of, um, we worked with um, high school teachers in poor schools, many times in rural communities, who had no science equipment. And so they used free online materials to teach science. And we asked them to create e-portfolios using Merlot Content Builder of teaching science. And so here is Mrs. Schwartz's homepage, all right? And so this is her website. 
And so here's when she teaches chemistry. Here's all the materials, free online materials. Think like a scientist, da da da. Here's a PowerPoint. Now, now you notice, see how it's still all the boxes? It's still the same structure that she put, puts an image here, blah, blah, blah. So she's created this website. We're hosting it for her, and, she, and it's free for her and access for her students. Okay, was that, I, I, that's one example. Another project um, I run is helping faculty redesign their courses to be more effective and interactive and things along those lines, right? We pay them money to rethink how they're redesigning their courses. Um, and then as a requirement, they have to write an e-portfolio to explain how they're doing it. And if any of you have to do something like this, where, where you're helping your faculty redesign their courses, I strongly encourage you to have your faculty tell their story of how they do it. And I'm gonna show you. So here's, we put the e-portfolio showcase. So here's the, the website. All right. Now, one of the questions always is, how do you scale this up, right? Now. Let me just, I'm just gonna scroll a bit here so you can see how many e-portfolios we've put up. These are just all, each one of these things is an e-portfolio by a faculty member across biology, business, chemistry, communications, critical thinking, economics, history, right? All right, and this is using the template let you have consistency and um, let, let me just uh, pick one. Uh, let me just show you one. Uh, how could these people know about you? How, how do these people know? Yeah, yeah. How, could, how could these people know about you? Know, and if you saw them, you know, uh, because I give them the money and I require them to use it. <laughs> okay. Um, let me, let me just, uh, uh, I want to, I, I probably, I could probably just pick anyone here. Um, let me go by campus. Oh, these are by dates. Okay, hang on, folks. Uh, let me just go to the, oh, here it is, Kelly's. I just want to show you Kelly's. Okay, so this is an, an example of, uh, we had faculty members redesign anatomy and physiology class. That is a class where we have a lot of students failing, right? A lot of content, you have to be, you know. And, um, and so flipping the classroom, have you heard about flipping the classroom? You see the video and you come and do exercise. So Kelly and her colleagues flipped the classroom and they created this e-portfolio about how they did this. So in here, again, we used a template to say, explain why you needed to redesign the course. Um, and what they did is they created all these videos that, again, <coughs> this e-portfolio allows them to showcase all that they've done. This is just, again, sorry, it's just a little. Um, oh, um, I'm using um, Chrome. It says I can't use it. Well, we'll see what happens. So here's a video. Is it going? Oh, it looks like it's loading up. So here's a video 
that students watch at home, and then when they come to um, come to class, then they talk about it and they do various things. So using newly created class time to engage students. So while the videos often get attention and the, the true focus is on what they do during the class time. And so here is the faculty member's story of how they redesigned the class. And let me show you this. This is the, they were, the, the percentage of Ds, Ws, and F grades. Around 40%, when they flipped the classroom, it dropped down to 20%. The same academic standards, but, this, but now the students were learning the materials better. Right? The e-portfolios and having this faculty members document what they're doing is really helpful for them because it gets them to be more, in a sense, researcher type people, right? And now it's publicly available. So if you folks, maybe you're teaching anatomy and physiology, or you know a colleague, and you can look at, well, how else could I teach it? You now can go to this website and look at all these other faculty members, and literally, we have a huge library here. If, if I'm in biology, uh, we got, I'm in chemistry, computer science, economics, engineering, English, geo, right? Uh, here's another. I just, I just picked this one. It's called History of Asians. History of Asians in the United States. So here's again what someone put together. Why did I redesign it? Comments from the students. I really liked how we did the flipped classroom. Again, if I coming back to how do you engage the students in the course, asking them what they think about it. All right, and I think. My observation is, over the years, is that we don't ask students enough about what they like in what we teach. And how do you engage them and listen to the feedback? And if you don't provide them a mechanism to give feedback, how are they going to become self-directed if we never give them the opportunity to direct themselves? And that, and that involves how we really have to change the way we teach. And I'll just say, coming back to teach people, not information. If I'm just teaching information, I say, I'm going to tell you what I think is important, and you have to learn it. Versus, here's a topic. What and why is this going to be important for you to learn? And that's the student has to figure that out. Coming back to the motivation is you have to, they have to be responsible to answer the question, why are you here? In, and when I started out this workshop, I asked you, what, you know, what did you want to learn? How often do you ask your students that? Today, what do you want to learn about today? We often walk in, here's what you're going to hear from me, right? I did it for many, many years. And that's, again, what technology can help you do is engage with students. Now, this tool right here, students can create e-portfolios, too. They can use it. It's free, available, and what you can do, you can create a template. You can create what you want, something specific for your course, and give it to your students. Be creative, free and available. And again, it's not the most exciting looking tool in the world, but you can put a whole lot of things into it and be creative about it. And. Um, 
and, I'll, and this is the last thing I'll say is, I've heard lots of talks about um, innovative technology and all the new ways of thinking. I mean, you've probably heard, we heard some today, right? But I rarely see people focus on how do you execute on implementing those ideas. Okay, be innovative, um, be flexible, be autonomous. Well, how are you gonna do that? And, and what I'd say, what we focused on in Merlot is all these tools are there for you to execute on your innovation, for you to do something, for your students to create things, for you to create things. It's work, no doubt about it, it is work. The execution part is where the work is. The ideas is often the easy part. The selling is the easy part. The doing is the hard part. And, and, um, and I think what you also get by doing it and you create something, you will feel the reward of you accomplishing it and making it your own there. Last question. You know the theme of this conference, you know, this I try to figure out, you know, how to say it. How can you find a way to do that? And what actually it really means? <laughs> you know, um, I, here's a way. Do, do you have a way to say breaking from tradition? Right? Because in part, tradition is, in a sense, um, past cultural business practices. It's the way we do things. It's the way we, we've lived our lives. And disruptive innovation is it's forcing us to change our traditions. And, and, so, and, and I think this is where some of the d dynamics are is um, some of these traditions are really valuable and some of them are barriers, right? And that's, and that's what you have to try to figure out is how do I keep a tradition that's really valuable and how do I disrupt, right, or change or uh, create a new tradition that's more valuable? And in a sense, technology here, uh, let's see, what I've observed in uh, education, not only in Thailand, but all over, there's a tradition of, uh, and I'll just say, respect for the faculty members and not questioning by the students. They go in, they listen, and they don't really engage. And then part of that lack of engagement is a tradition that becomes a barrier for student learning. And so how do you break the tradition of um, being quiet in the classroom but maintain the, tr the tradition of respect for authority, right? Because sometimes when you question a faculty member, you might say, I, I, don't understand, I don't believe that or I don't understand that or you didn't explain that very well, right? And someone might interpret that as disrespectful. But how do you turn that to be, how do I engage them to ask those questions so, so their motivation challenges some traditions? And that's why th th this, is, this is more about people than it is about technology. I mean, disruptive innovation in education is really more about how do we change the way we do and interact with ourselves, not that technology is just a little it synergizes some of those behavioral changes. Okay. So, was this a, a useful spending of your time this afternoon? Yes. It was? Okay. 
right. Well, I, I just want to thank you all. Um, your patience with the technology, your patience with me going through these things. So I, I really do appreciate um, you spending your afternoon here with me. <laughs> After this, we can have a group picture. Oh, I'm, I'm okay. Oh, 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 oh I, yeah. I, I have things to give. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So I have... Uh, also brochure? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, we can so, so here's some pens. Should I come to see you? Oh, of course. <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> we have coffee. Oh, you're very welcome. But these guys, I still have... Uh, oh, here, can you pass those out there? Eight years. Eight years. Sure, of course. Do you want to contribute some time in time? Uh huh. Would that be welcome? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, right now we all also we're, have we're in, uh, time. We have a, a UTFA coding, uh, so it takes all languages. And definitely would love it in time. Well, let's say you can find a, an article or material in English that is very good, and we would like to translate that for for our students in Thai, and then we want to contribute that back to the Indo. Great, that's a great example. Yeah, and yeah, because guess what? I mean, in California, uh, one we have a large Thai community, especially in Southern California. But we're trying to help our students become global students, right? And how, how are they going to learn that? Right? We all can't go to Thailand, right? And what we do, you are reaching out to us by putting these resources so we can use the time, stuff created by you in our own education, in our Thai language courses, in our, um, we, we have uh, Asian Pacific uh, courses uh, in a lot of them. And so, being able to use your materials would be very helpful to us. Sure. Any uh, other pets? Anybody want an extra pet to give away? Can I? Oh, sure. Jory? Yes. Is uh, Anusha still working with you about uh, how to uh, organize the Thai, Thai Merlo? Uh, I yes. heard that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. If uh, we have Thai Merlo, please join us. TCU me project you, Naha, Kalang Du, you got hung known. นะจะเป็นจะเป็นไทยแชปเตอร์นะฮะทุกอย่างเหมือนกันหมดทีซียูกําลังดิวอยู่นะคะเพราะมันนั่นใช้เวลานิดนึงนะคะค่ะค่
Many of you get some idea to utilize it in your teaching and work. And even some of you will upload your own material. Just try. It's very easy. And when someone download and say thank you to you, that feeling is very great. And on behalf of TCU, I would like to say thank you for a thousand times for Jerry, <laughs> because he's always kind, accept uh, our invitation and fly a long way home. And, uh, and we hope that next time you will accept our invitation again. Of okay. course. <laughs> I, I, I very much enjoy being here and working with you folks and getting to know each of you from self-directed questions to mm -hmm. getting your students motivated mm -hmm. to how do you use it or designing your course, all your issues. I just, I really, it's wonderful mm -hmm. getting to know you. And if you guys agree with me that his presentation is excellent, Please give him a big applause. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're very welcome. See you tomorrow. Okay. Have a safe trip back home. And and the physics person, just the physics person, I just. Oh yeah yeah. Would you like to get a group picture? Oh, you can have sure. a group picture. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> 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 okay, thank you.